Ukraine now has the right to mobilize its citizens for fighting against Russia. You know that there is a Hungarian minority in Ukraine. Many of them are called upon to fight on the side of the Ukrainian troops. They fight and die. And therefore, Hungary is the only EU country whose citizens living on Ukrainian territory die during this conflict. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban said in an interview with Italian publication Il Giornale. Viktor Orban's words that Hungarian citizens living in Ukraine are being mobilized and sent to the front line are continued in the comments of officials from other countries. Initially, it was stated that only citizens of Ukraine who do not have citizenship of another state would be mobilized in Ukraine. However, firstly, in reality, this does not work. There are many confirmed facts that persons with dual citizenship were also subject to mobilization in Ukraine and secondly, now they have decided to legalize this format. The US Embassy in Ukraine has published a warning information for all its citizens who have a second Ukrainian citizenship. The embassy statement said that it is not recommended for American citizens who also have a Ukrainian civil passport to visit Ukraine. It is reported that as of June the 1st, the legal exception in Ukraine ceased to apply to the mobilization of all those citizens of the country who have lived abroad for a long time and have a second passport. From the report, American Ukrainian citizens, men between the ages of 18 and 60, are now no longer eligible for this exemption in Ukraine. For them, leaving the country is closed from June the 1st. Next, American diplomacy tries to justify itself to its Ukrainian citizens. We are limited in our ability to influence Ukrainian legislation, including legislation regulating martial law and mobilization in Ukraine. This is followed by a directive. If you are in Ukraine and cannot leave the country, obey the orders of the Ukrainian authorities. Thus, Washington actually states that it is not against the mobilization of US citizens with second Ukrainian citizenship into the ranks of the armed forces of Ukraine. US intelligence services recruit spies in Kremlin. Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine gave US intelligence agencies a rare opportunity to recruit Kremlin insiders angry about the war. As the head of the Central Intelligence Agency, Bill Burns, noted last year that dissatisfaction with the war creates a once-in-a-generation opportunity. Recruitment efforts are not a state secret. During the war, the CIA released Russian language videos appealing to Russians dissatisfied with the invasion who had access to information useful to the United States. It underscores the evolution of an intelligence service that has largely carried out its tasks under the cloak of secrecy. The intelligence posts provide step-by-step -step instructions for potential whistleblowers on avoiding detection by using virtual private networks and the Tor web browser to contact the agency anonymously on the so-called dark web, according to CNN. As during the Cold War, espionage remains a vital tool on both sides of the latest conflict, as evidenced by tech-savvy American intelligence agents who are trying to recruit new agents in plain sight, as well as Russian-linked operatives who reportedly have stepped up their activities across Europe, CNN adds. According to Douglas London, the former head of the CIA's overseas division, directly approaching potential informants is an unusual approach, but one that can prove effective. Since the beginning of the full-scale war, Russia has intensified the activity of its spy networks throughout Europe. The latter's task is to commit sabotage, gather the information they need, or undermine support for Ukraine. Russian spies bungled preparations for the war and were then expelled from Europe en masse. But new evidence gathered by the Royal United Services Institute, a think tank in London, shows that they are learning from their errors, adjusting their tradecraft and embarking on a new phase of political warfare against the West. Ukrainian fighters learned to drop NATO-style glide bombs surprises await the Russians. Russian aviation drops about 3,000 glide bombs on Ukrainian positions and civilian settlements every month. Satellite-guided bombs have a range of more than 60 kilometers. This means that Russian Su-30, Su-34 and Su-35 fighter bombers can fire their bombs beyond the range of almost all Ukrainian air defenses except some Western systems. According to Forbes, cab glide bombs weighing 500 and 1,000 kilograms are miracle weapons for the Russians, noted the Ukrainian analytical group Deep State. Ukrainians 
have virtually no resistance. Ukrainian forces may not be able to defend against Russian glide bombs, but they can strike with their own glide bombs, the publication writes. To this end, the Ukrainian Air Force is converting its 40 or 50 surviving MiG-29 fighters and perhaps dozens of Su-27 fighters into precision glide bombers armed with American short-range bombs. This is an important development as the tiny Ukrainian Air Force tries to match the crushing glide bombing campaign of the much larger Russian Air Force, which has hundreds of Su-30s, Su-34s and Su-35s with four or even six cabs on each mission. This is fantastic news, wrote Finnish analyst Joni Askola. The bad news is that Ukraine probably cannot acquire enough small diameter bombs or other munitions to continue the missions of its MiGs and Sukhoi. No one outside the Pentagon and the Ukrainian Air Force knew that the Ukrainians had 130 kilogram small diameter bombs that operate at a range of 110 kilometers under satellite guidance on retractable wings until photos showing MiGs surfaced online late last month, 29 with six miniature bombs under the wings. Ukrainian MiGs were already capable of carrying glide munitions. Last year, American, French and Ukrainian technicians worked together to arm Ukrainian MiG-29s and Su-27s with the American Joint Direct Attack Munition Extended Range Glide Bomb and the French-made Armament Air Sol Modulaire Glide Bomb. JDAM ER and AASM weigh about 225 kilograms. Small diameter bombs have the advantage of being smaller and also boasting a longer range than the JDAM ER and AASM, both of which reach approximately 65 kilometers under the best conditions. A single MiG or SU armed with a small diameter bombs could hit six targets in one sortie and do so from a great distance thereby reducing the risk from Russian air defense. Equally important, small diameter bombs cost only $40,000 per bomb.